got up for your sins and mine. He not only got up for your sins and mine, but he woke us up this morning. That's enough to be thankful for. Yeah, yeah. You know all these storms we've been having. God still is in Yeah, yeah. We might have not had electricity at one time or another, but we're still in a house that had no electricity. That's enough to pray in the Lord for right now. I'm just trying to get you there because we have my church and we're scared to acknowledge him for who he is. But he's going all by his slip. Amen, 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 amen. It's off the call now. It's off the call now. Those of you who will, you would make your way to the altar now. What I like about the altar is everybody don't come up here for the same thing. But yet it's still the God that can answer your prayer and will answer somebody else's prayer. He just wants you to give it over to him. Whatever you're going through. Remember we serve a God that knows our thoughts even before we think. You be truthful to God, he'll be truthful to you. Bring all your birds to the altar and leave them there. Because he's a bird man. He's a heavy load chef. Our Father and our God, the creator and the sustainer of this entire universe. Here we are, Lord, once again coming before you now. The humblest way that we know how. Lord, we just want to say thank you right now. Yeah. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we realize we have many needs. But oh God, we want to thank you right now. Thank you, my Father, for not giving up on us. Thank you, my Father, for waking us up this morning. Clothed and in our right mind. With the reasonable portion of our health and strength. Heavenly Father, with the activities of our limbs right now. Lord, we want to say thank you right now. Heavenly Father, we thank you most of all for Jesus Christ. If it had not been for him, we wouldn't be here right now. Lord God, thank you right now. Thank you for allowing us to lay down on last night. To sleep in a comatose like state of mind, my Father. Unconscious of what was going on all around us, my Father. But oh God, early this morning, you gave us another chance right now. Another chance to come into your house and worship right now. Another chance to open our mouths up and pray for you right now. Another chance to open our mouths up and worship you right now. Another chance, my Father, just to thank you, my Father, for bringing us safe this far. Oh God, we come now, my Father, asking you to please continue to forgive us of our sins, my Father. For all have sinned and come short of your glory, my Father. Nobody is immune right now. Heavenly Father, we've all, my Father, had faults and shortcomings right now. But, oh God, thank you, my Father, that you don't hold that against us right now. Thank you for looking beyond all of our faults, my Father, and supplying all of our needs right now. Now, oh God, we come now praying for these that are gathered around this altar. Heavenly Father, some of them, my Father, might be going through some deep things right now. Heavenly Father, but I want them to know, my Father, that you are a problem solver right now. I want them to know, my Father, you are a company keeper right now. I want them to know that you are praying, my Father, when they get lonely right now. I want them to know that you pray, my Father, when they get hungry right now. I want you to know that you water, my Father, when they get thirsty right now. I want them to know you're a burden bearer right now. I want them to know you're a heavy load sharer right now. Heavenly Father, you can do all things except fail right now. Heavenly Father, help them to realize, my Father, no matter what's going on right now, you still in control right now. Heavenly Father, help them to realize, my Father, nothing moves or has its being, my Father, unless you give it permission right now. Heavenly Father, help us, Lord, not to wallow in what we're going through. But, oh, Lord, to look up and thank you for where you're fixing to bring us right now. Heavenly 
Father. Help us to learn, my Father, how to not get so involved, my Father, in failures of what things are lacking in our lives, my Father. And just thank you, my Father, that we come this far by faith right now. Oh, God, have your way right now. God, search you and every man in here right now. Heavenly Father, you know all about us because you created us, my Father. Heavenly Father, and Lord, we ask, my Father, that those that are in here right now, that don't know you in the part of their sin, those that, my Father, who have given up, my Father, those who are at the crossroads of life right now, Heavenly Father, we ask that you step in right now. Heavenly Father, and turn them to look forward to you right now. Heavenly Father, help us, my Father, when we want to look down, to look up right now. Heavenly Father, we'll see you standing there, my Father. Oh, God, bless everybody in this building right now. Heavenly Father, I know everybody that comes to the altar, my Father, not the only one they need you right now. Somebody sitting in these pews right now who didn't come, my Father, need you for one thing or another. Heavenly Father, even myself, my Father, in my prayer right now, I need you, my Father, for one thing or another, my Father. Heavenly Father, thank you, my Father. Thank you for your kindness right now. Heavenly Father, thank you, my Father, for continuing to guide, lead and guide us right now. Lord, take hold of the reins of all of our minds and lead us from one good degree to another. Heavenly Father, help us, Lord, to look to you for everything right now. Why? Because you're worthy right now. Heavenly Father, help us to look to you, my Father. Why? Because you are able right now. Lord, just have your way right now. Heavenly Father, dear Lord, continue, my Father, to bless the pastor right now. Lord, bless all these preachers that are on the poor pit right now. Heavenly Father, bless those in the choir stand, my Father. Heavenly Father, have that on the way. We are all members of one body. Try to make heaven our home right now. Lead us, Lord, and guide us right now. Help us, Lord, to prop each other up right now. Heavenly Father, all of us grow weak sometimes. Lord, we all need encouragement right now. Give us the spirit of encouragement right now. Heavenly Father, just because I'm up don't mean that I won't ever be down right now. Just because you are up right now don't mean one day you won't be down. But oh Lord, thank you for the members of the body of Christ right now. Heavenly Father, continue to encourage us right now. Lord, have your way in this service right now. Heavenly Father, and then we ask my Father that your word become proclamation this morning. Lord, we ask my Father that it will get on your street and wake you up right now. Heavenly Father, not because we we mad at you, but Lord, because we want to help you right now. Lord, help your word to be a help to somebody along the way, my Father. Lord, just have your way right now. Have your way right now. Strengthen us, Lord, where we're weak. Build us up where we're torn down. Prop us up on every need. Heavenly Father, if you do that, we'll be careful to give your name away. It's in Jesus Christ's name that we ask it all. Amen. Thank God. Amen. While we are getting things ready for a special presentation, if you are here this Sunday visiting for the very first time, would you stand? We want to recognize you. Amen. If you're here visiting for the very first time, I see you on that Amen. All that others. If you would remain standing for just a moment, one of the ushers will come and place something in your hand. Amen. We have a visitor right here in the middle section. Woman of God, we want to say you could have chosen any church in the city of Houston, but we're so grateful that you stopped by this Sunday morning to worship with us. If you take that card and fill it out with your convenience, drop it into the offertory vessel at the offering time, it will allow us an opportunity to catch up with you and to keep you abreast of what's going on around Second Mount Island. Yeah. Now, because we are an overly, overly neighborly church, now let us stand and lean over to our neighbor, and if we haven't already told them, tell them good morning. Good morning. Come on, let's find our visitor, wrap our arms around them, let them know that we're loving, and that's absolutely nothing you can do about. Come on, find your neighbor on the other side and tell them good morning. Come on, get a hand and tell them you're sitting in the best seat in the house. Because you're sitting next to me. Good morning, good morning, good morning. You are, you are welcome. You are welcome. You are welcome.
in this house that said I plan to hold it to myself. But when I think about what he's done for me, I just can't keep it to myself. I got to tell somebody that he saved me, that he raised me, that the God I serve, he is able to do exceedingly. Genesis chapter 3, the book of Genesis chapter 3. This 
month is going to be men's emphasis month. Genesis chapter 3. I want you to meet me at verse number 1. Uh, quite a bit of reading today, but it's necessary. I want to commence at verse number 1 and conclude at verse number 12. And if the Lord is kind, the reading will be longer than the sermon. Amen. When you have it, say, I got it. If you're still looking, say, wait for me. And put your hand up. I need to know who your Sunday school teacher is. If you cannot find Genesis chapter 3. <laughs> Just turn past the table of contents. And the first book you get to. The book of beginnings. <laughs> will be the book of Genesis. Amen. I might not be able to call out all 66 books, but I know book number one. I'm reading from the New American Standard. No matter what version you read, it should sound like this. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast in the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Indeed, God has said, You shall not eat from any tree in the garden. And the woman said to the serpent, From the trees, from the fruit of the trees in the garden, we may eat. But from the fruit of the tree which is in the middle of the garden, God said, You shall not eat of it, nor touch it, or you will die. The serpent said to the woman, You surely will not die. For God knows that in the day that you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that's the lust of the flesh, and it was a delight to the eyes. That's the light. That's the that's the the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes. And that the tree was desirable to make one wise. That is the pride of life. She took of the fruit and ate it. And she gave also to her husband with her, and he ate. Then both of them. Their eyes were open and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loin coverings. They heard the sound of the Lord God parting in the cool of the day and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord God called the man and said, where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. And he said unto them, who told you you were naked? Is that in your Bible? He said unto him, who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, the woman whom you gave to me. She gave me from the tree, and I ate. Grass withers, the flower fades, the word of our God shall stand forever. For the time that is ours to share together, I want to speak into the heart of every man the absence of Adam. You may be seated in the presence of our God. The absence. Of Adam. In a clinical study in 2021, uh, the statistics says that 50.6% of all families are growing up with a mother and children and no father. That in 50.6% of all of our homes, there is a nurturer of a mother, but no namer that is a father. And could it be that we have labeled ourselves with things because we had mother to nurture, but we did not have a daddy to name? Could, could it be that, that we are dealing with a deficiency of men and women in our churches because the truth of the matter is Ap Adam is absent that he's not only absent in the life of the home but he's absent in the life of the church that he's absent in the community that that we are in a revolving door of the absence 
absence of men being where they're supposed to be. There was a time in church where you would look in the front of the church and men were lined up from one side to the other in the front because they understood that men were to be in leadership. But now the church is made up of 80% women and 20% men. And the reason that things are falling apart is because although mother is there, Adam is absent. And this pivotal passage points to the picture of what happens in life when man is missing. I want to share this with you for, first of all, man is missing in manhood. Man's assignment was to take charge, but if you examine the first five verses, instead of taking charge, man has run for cover. In the first five verses, there's a dialect between an intruder and the wife, and we find that the man is nowhere listed in the scriptures. There's a back and forth between an intruder into our area and note, y'all, that there is no no uh, words from the man. It's as if an intruder has broken into your house and instead of the man going down to see what's going on, he taps his wife on the shoulder and say, I need you to go see about that. I want you to know, men, that he was missing in manhood. Man's assignment was to take charge. But instead, he ran for cover. There is an active spiritual attack in progress and the man is nowhere to be found. Could it be that your daughter is hooked on drugs because you are not present? Could it be that your house is falling apart because while your wife is there, the male voice is absent five verses, an intruder in our area, and no man nowhere to be found. Here's what he does. He abandons his position as protector. God in chapter 1 has given him dominion and the wife has come out of him. His job was to protect and to provide but he was not protecting because he allows his wife to take the forefront while he hangs out in the background. I don't know who I'm talking to today but I hope God wakes up something in you so that we can begin to take our natural places in the kingdom of God. He was missing in his manhood. Now watch this. As the Bible talks about the man's position as provider and protector, let me be clear, you also have a role as the priest. You also have a role to give spiritual leadership to your family. You also have a role to take the lead when it comes to prayer and it comes to worship. You not only have the, the responsibility to take care of the bills, but you also need to take care of the blessings. You not only have a responsibility responsibility to be a provider but you also have a responsibility to be a leader in prayer. Is there anybody here that's looking around at the sad state of manhood and realize I'm missing when it comes to being a man? Eve misquoted the scripture and she's being misled by the serpent and the man is sitting there in silence. What's interesting is that Adam is not really absent because if you read verse number six, the text is clear. Adam is actually there all the time. Can I ask you a question? Uh, have you ever seen a man that was present and not present? Men don't get mad at me. 
baby. We're going to get on the women before the summer is over. I'm starting with us because we're the head. And the truth of the matter is, he was missing in his manhood. He was there. But he wasn't there. I was watching a game the other day. They were upset at one of the superstars because uh, Deacon Collins, they had played a whole game. And then they looked at his stats and it was zeros everywhere. They said, man, he might as well not have played because although he was present, he didn't contribute. I wonder who I'm talking to today. That we won't be absentee when it comes to standing for God. He was missing in his manhood. Watch this. Watch this. He doesn't just abandon his position, but he assumes a posture of passivity. Let the church say he's passive. He assumes a position of passivity. Can I be clear? We as a society have been critical of our sisters because they are always speaking. Maybe the woman has to speak because men have become silent. Do me a favor, if you a man, find another man and simply tell them I need you to say something. Yet yeah, if her skirt is too short, I need you to say something. Uh, if he's staying out too late, I need you to say something. If life starts pulling us away from the Lord, I need you to say something. If the house knows how to party, but don't nobody know how to pray, I need you to say something. Maybe she's doing all the talking because the man is sitting in silence. I knew it was going to get quiet because men don't like being told what to do. But the text is clear that the absence of Adam is because we are missing in our manhood. And let me go ahead and help you. Somebody saying I'm a man just because I got the male anatomy. That don't make you a man. That just make you a male. A real man knows how to take care of his family. And a real man knows how to worship our God. Is there anybody here that can testify? I'm a real man. And it's going to pinch a little bit right here for some of us. Watch this, y'all. The inventor, he's not just missing in his manhood. But the text says he's missing in his marriage. This side quiet. Let me talk to this side over here. He's not just missing in his manhood, but the text suggests that he's missing in his marriage. The serpent deceives the wife. She eats the fruit. She gives the fruit to her husband who is present with her. He eats also. God shows up as he usually does in the garden. The wind is blowing symbolizing that God is present. And at that moment God says, Adam, where art thou? He's hiding. Watch this. And the first thing he does is blame the wife who is his bride. He does not take responsibility for the family himself. In fact, he turns to God and said, Lord, I would have been all right if it wasn't for the gift you gave me. No, you're making God's word a lie. The Bible says he who findeth the wife findeth the good thing. I need you to understand it's up to the man to take responsibility. For a man 
man in here that's complaining about his wife, maybe if you gave her honor, she would give you happiness. Maybe she would please you if you learned how to pour into her. But the truth of the matter is that we're too busy pointing the finger at the one God gave us and not recognizes that she wasn't supposed to be in charge anyway. God puts you in charge. Not only is the man missing in his manhood, but he's missing in his marriage. And he does something. I'm almost done. He does something that is the plight of every married woman in the world. Let me show you this. Your job is to cover her. It's not that she wants you to fix it, but she wants you to cover her. When, when she's in a disagreement with somebody, it's not that she wants you to take her side, but she wants to know that she's covered. She wants to know that if everybody else leaves, that you got her back. She wants to know if she lose her job and she lose the house or she gets sick, that you're going to be there. But Adam does not cover her. He exposes her. He said, it was that woman you gave me. If not for her, we wouldn't be in that situation. And can I just tell you, you're a sad excuse for a man. If you pointing out the deficiencies of your wife, because guess what? The Bible says you two are one. So whatever you say about her, He attempted to expose her when God called him to cover her. I wonder who I'm talking to today. Don't put your hand up because uh, don't nobody need to know I'm talking to you. But I need you to understand that God called you to be a covering. That your wife should feel so safe when she's in your presence. It's as if nothing could go wrong. That's because she's covered. Whenever I see a woman walk in with a big smile on her face, it ain't because she got a new car or a new house. It's because she got a husband that knows how to cover her. I'm wrapping it up, me, and I sent y'all a man at me. If you're a brother in the house, just point to one woman and tell her, y'all next, y'all next. He's, he's missing in his manhood. He's missing in his marriage, but watch this. He's also missing in his ministry. God showed up and he asked the man three questions. Deacon Mitchell, when he shows up, he knows who he puts in charge, so he does not even ask for Eve. Although Eve is the one that initiated the fall, we really didn't fall until Adam ate the fruit. So he says, I'm not even looking for your wife. I'm looking for you, Adam. Where art thou? Where you at, Adam? I'm where I usually meet you, but I don't see you. Where are you, Adam? I wish I had a witness that would testify that every now and then we need to find a man and say, brother, where are you? Our children are falling to hell in a handbasket. Where are you? Our finances are a mess. Where are you? Our house is falling apart. So we asked him three questions. He says, First of all, he asked a rhetorical question. 
Adam, where are you? He asked this question not because he doesn't know where Adam is, because he is omnipresent, which means he's everywhere at the same time. He asked this question because he wants Adam to know that he's not where he's supposed to be. Lord, help me to preach this today. He wants Adam to know that I wanted you here, but you're over there. He wanted Adam to know that you're supposed to be in the house, but you're spending too much time out the house. He wanted Adam to to know that I put you in the garden and we used to fellowship together but watch this your sin has put you in seclusion the truth is he already knows where you are can, can I encourage you brothers the good thing about it is although we are out of place isn't it just like God that he doesn't leave us there but while we are hiding from him that the Lord comes looking for us ain't you glad that when you was in the club he came looking for you ain't you glad that when you was in the casino he came looking for you ain't you glad that when you were strung out on drugs he came looking for you he didn't leave you in your sin he said Adam where are then he asked the second question who you been talking to is it in your bible he said who told you that you were naked he wants to know where you are and he wants to know who you've been listening to can I tell you most of us got off track because we were listening to the wrong people you a married man but you listening to a single man you a man with a job but you're listening to somebody that don't have a job I wish I had a witness here that will testify you gotta watch who you listening to Men, I'm done. I'm done. He wanted to know where are you? He wanted to know who you've been talking to. And then lastly, he wanted to know what you've been eating. Can I tell you that 90% of all diseases are caused by what you have consumed. So what God was asking was a relevant question. What have you been eating? In fact, scientists have lined up with the Bible to say you are what you eat. So if you're looking at yourself right now and you're not where you want to be, it's probably not because of what people are saying about you. It's because of what you're eating. And can you just reach over and ask your neighbor? You need to check your appetite. Appetite. Tell your neighbor that you're not where you are because of what anybody said, but it's about what you've been eating. Because everything you consume is going to come out of you. All of those cuss words is what you consume. All of those lewd, crude acts is what you consume. He says what you've been eating at. I'm not closing the day because you already celebrated. I want to speak to the men in this room and ask the same question God asks. Where are you? Why are you not where God called you to be? Why have you vacated your God-given position? Why did God put you in dominion but you're still bringing up the rear? Why did God put you in the game but you're comfortable with sitting on the bench? Just find a man and ask him, where are you? Young brothers, who you been listening to? Listening to older teenagers telling you about women that they know nothing about. Who are you listening to? 
instead of listening to your mothers and your grandmothers, young women being raised up on Megan the Stallion and Cardi B, who are you listening to? I mean, what are you eating? A steady diet of ungodliness will only reap more ungodliness. A steady diet of every profane thing that you can get your hands on will only lead to more profanity. A steady diet of giving credit to everybody but God will only lead to a bigger breach in your relationship with God. He asked three questions. Where are you? Who are you listening to? And what are you eating? Verse 12. The man said, the woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me from the truth and I ate. Men, if you would stand and meet me at the altar today. Every man, young and old. Righteous husbands and fathers that are not afraid to lead. I, I see people that are not absent but that have accepted the, the fact that God has called me to be the head. And because I'm the head, I can never be the tail. I can never follow somebody else's lead because I'm a leader myself. Father, I thank you. For these brothers that are at this altar, Father, I know they face some tremendous difficulties, Father. I know that it's not easy to walk in your statutes, Father. I know that when we look around this sin-sick world, there's so many things that we can get pulled into, Father, that can taint our spirits, Father. But I'm praying that you would call us into leadership, Father, that you would allow us to recognize that God has called us to walk in the front, that God has called us not only to lead our families, but to lead others that are without fathers, that, that I might not have a biological son, but that that somebody can latch a hold to me because they see the spirit of the Lord on my life. Father, I'm decreeing and declaring rich blessings over the men of God that you would give them vision to be businessmen, that you would give them visions to be preachers and deacons, that you would give them visions to be supervisors. God, that you would unlock, Father, all of the spiritual gifts within them, that they would walk in the authority of God, Father. I pray that they would accept responsibility that, Father, I'm not making excuses for where I am another day. I'm not blaming the government. I'm not blaming nobody else that's a different nationality. But I understand that if God be for me, he's more than the world against me. I'm a man and he called me to lead. Give us a burning desire to please you. Father, 
Father, I pray now before I end this prayer for any besetting sin, Father, for any drug addiction, Father, for any addiction to pornography or any kind of lewd, cruel act, Father. I pray that you would begin to root it out right now in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father, that as a man, if I got anything within me that's keeping me from being who you called me to be, that you would deal with my appetite this morning, Father. Father, I only want to digest what's pleasing to you. So, Father, when I digest the word of God, when I digest worship and praise, that that's going to exude from my spirit. I'm praying now, God, that you would get rid of any unholy appetite. I want to walk in a way that pleases you. In Jesus' name, amen. Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise? If there are any of you today that want to join with this growing congregation, you can come now as our men take their seats. If there are any here that want to join today, if there are any here that want to be a part of this growing congregation, we want you to come. If there are any here that the Lord is calling to this ministry, you feel the gentle nudging and push of God, I want you to step now. I want you to step now. For we don't know what tomorrow might bring. All we really have is today. If the Spirit of the Lord is quickening you and telling you to come, we want you to come. We're waiting for you. We know that the Lord is calling you. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Oh, God, I bless you. Oh, God, I bless you. There may be others today. Hallelujah. There may be others today that the Lord is calling to the ministry, that the Lord is calling to be a part of this house. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise for He is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. I, I want you to know, uh, my aunt and uncle, I respect you a great deal. And part of the reason I respect you is you didn't come here just because I was here. You and I talked several times. Uh, and you let me know under no, certain, no uncertain terms that you were supporting us. But that until the Lord led you and Uncle Ray in this direction, that you would be where you were. So I thank God that you walk in that kind of integrity. That it's not a me and you thing, it's a God thing. Come on, give God praise today. Amen. I'm going to ask, let, let me let them reintroduce themselves, and after they do that, you go with Sister Jackie, she'll get your information. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I'm Gwendolyn Craft. Uh, I was a member here years ago. Amen. And, uh, Amen. I'm, like you said, I'm not coming back just because he's family, he's my nephew, but um, I enjoy the service, the spirit is truly here. And um, we just want to be a part of it. Yeah. Well, I don't talk too much, but I watch my wife uh, seeing you preach and every day, every Sunday, and she watch you in the morning, and I get up and watch you too. I've been watching. And Reverend Brian, don't change nothing. Yeah. Come on, give God praise for that. Join Sister Jackie, she'll get the information and all that we need. Can we give the Lord praise for our newest members, Wendell and Wendell and Frank? Amen. Hallelujah. I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it 
in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, soever shall eat this bread and drink this cup up to the Lord, unworthy shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let no man, but let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of the bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation unto death, not discerning Lord's body. But this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Let us pray. Father God, we approach this table today. We come humbly before you, recognizing the ultimate sacrifice of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Please forgive our transgressions, cleanse our hearts, and put a new spirit within us. May this communion strengthen our faith, deepen our love for you and for one another. We ask it all in the name of Jesus. Amen. the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who shed his blood at the remission of our sin. Take it and drink all of it. Amen. this day. We thank you for what our eyes have seen and our ears have heard. Father, we thank you for the visitation of the Holy Spirit on this day that the Lord has made. We thank you for the family that joined us today, Father. Now may the love of God, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us now, henceforth, and forevermore. And the church said, Amen. Amen. 